Pleasure to be here. Hey, uh, this is uh, Broken City Artist Podcast number 11. It's a very special issue, edition. This one does get to 11. Seven. It does. <laughs> For once, this is my good pal, long time pal. Dude. Dave. We're not even Ford. old enough to be friends as long as we have been. That's yeah, true. I mean, I like I to believe that exact same thing. Like it seems like I'm 24, 25 in my body. Right. Not so much here, but. Yeah, I feel like since probably the age of 35, I've been going like backwards in age, a decade at a mm-hmm. time. I feel much That's younger good. mentally. Every old guy says that, by the way, but. <laughs> That's no, kind of how I feel. I'm doing good. You're like 65. <laughs> your knees are blown out. I'm great. I feel alive. It's know? true though, man. Like I think when you're like I took what I did and like my process as an artist and wanting to like um, excel and progress so seriously, I think that I almost missed out on a lot of 100 my late teen years, my 20s, like, and then had to sort of like re-engage with that mentality mm-hmm. that that anything's possible, and it's about learning and experiencing life, and like, I really feel like I did. Yeah. And now that like I kind of have, have created, like, I've gotten some more balance and some more, I think, uh, psychological maturity and stuff, mm-hmm. that, that I feel younger in that way, like there's more space in my psyche to like, process. experience life, process yeah. things, appreciate relationships, all that stuff. Um, I don't know if you felt the same way. But Dude, when, absolutely. I think I would say I'm most grateful for more emotional intelligence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this sense of <clears throat> reacting and responding to people and something that, you know, took me for a long time. I think just I grew up in a pretty reactive environment. So for me... Like your home life? Yeah, I was very trained, you know. I exactly. use that word like trained. I was trained in reactivity, you know. Wow. That sort of... Um, what I was taught, like when things feel a little crazy, when things are something's bothering you, you react to it and you get bigger than it. And I'd say I did that constantly, especially touring and being in a band. You know, you have to, to, yeah, to your point of, of like sort of missing life, like like I look back now and the idea of being present, like I mean. I, la- I used to laugh with the guys in my band because they would go, many of them would go like, oh, you remember that one time we were in like Billings, Montana, and we played that little crap hole place, and you know, whatever, and and I'd be like, no, I don't remember that at all. Or like, or maybe very vaguely, but they would be like, remember we went to that little like crappy donut shop in the morning, and we got this thing, and then we met this guy, and his name was Joe, and I'm just like, nope, don't. Don't know what you're talking about. And as, at the time, I was so like my mind was revving, like I was beta theta or whatever it was. I was like Bang! just yeah. slamming the red all the time with what I had to do and trying to multitask and yeah. doing all these. You were probably in last night's gig and in, and the gig coming up and the and legal and issue and the thing with the manager the, and the you know yeah. like uh, where is our merch going to make it to the show so we can pay the bills? I mean, just all those little things that you just sort of. You, you just don't you're just like not aware of it. and I think when yeah. I finally slowed down the space of just sitting like not touring literally right. just like coming home and being home for a long period of time not like a, three days or a week but mm-hmm. I just kind of got to this place where I was like oh my gosh I missed out on so many opportunities now there's other it's a mental little juggling act like when yeah. you're in that place especially as the band leader the front man, the mm-hmm. guy who you know feels kind of responsible for the business and the songs. It's like your brain is juggling like a dozen balls, and like, can Absolutely. you really? And you don't want to drop any one of them. Do you really have time to just kind of sit back and chill? Yeah. Like, no, you're like. <laughs> Everybody else is like, yeah, I'm the dude. And I was like, I love juggling. <laughs> well, I think, and that's such a great thing too, because I just realized that I'm. I think when you're younger, I don't know if you really just, when you say you're going back in decu- decades, like I think the thing for me that I keep realizing, like when you're younger, you really have this sense of urgency, like this, like everything is so important, and if you don't finish this thing, if you do drop the ball on the merch getting there on time, then the world is collapsing around you, you know, and now I just, I'm like, huh, like, oh, that thing didn't happen, oh, 
bummer. You know, like yeah, it's how to really, prioritize. It's really not a big issue. I mean, there's certain things that are like big issues, like if my children slam their head against the wall and we need to get to the emergency room. That's not a big, a big issue. Deal. Oh, big deal. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. but, but if it, you know the, the things that happen in daylight, and you just kind of take a break and go. Like my whole mantra the last like three or four years has just been pause. Like back to that reactivity thing. Mm-hmm. If I'm feeling that, oh my gosh, I'll just go wait. wait, wait. You know, it's interesting. I was just listening to uh, Bill Burr's most recent oh, podcast, nice. and he's like, "I'm such a hothead," and he's he's married, and he was at the you know at the front desk of, of an airline, and the lady was just chit chatting with somebody and not getting to him, mm. and he was fuming about right. just like sure. lay one on her, and his wife just goes, "Give it a minute, just give it," and he was like, "It's the whole world opened up." So he's like, "For for a month now." He's like, I just say, give it a minute. Give it a minute. And I realize, like, <laughs> it's great. It's interesting. I mean, obviously, it's the most simple thing ever, but. That's the great, that, that's a beautiful thing about life. Like, that little moment, that little aha moment where you have this one thing that sticks out to you that just crossroads at the right time, right place, and you go, okay, yes, give it a minute, or pause, or whatever the yeah. new lesson is. And, and, and there's such, fr- I think, for me, there's just such freedom in. Like realizing how much more liberated I am mentally, physically, spiritually, yeah, by just giving things space and time and not needing to jump in on a conversation like I used to. I mean, I'm such a talker. I'm such a conversationalist. Right. I love conversation. I love doing this. You know, it's great. And I could just, if people let me, and I'm not conscious, mm. you know, if I if I step out of the awareness of the other person, present, yeah. I just will go la, 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 forever. And then people are like, dude, that guy. Whoa, you know, and um, yeah, it's just yeah, it's just the, the nature of a busy mind, you know. Yeah. I, I, hmm. I don't know if it's you could call something like that ADD, you could call it being egocentric, but it's I don't think it's either for you. I think it's just the nature of a mind that goes this, then that, then this, yeah. then that, then this, then that. You know, and it's you know, easy to get caught up in that. Totally. That can lead to anxiety. That can lead to great creativity. It can mm-hmm. lead to incredible entrepreneurialism. Yeah. There's so many great sides of it, but then there's, like you said, yeah. a balancing act of self-awareness totally. to understand when you are like going crazy, going off the rails, or you know, I do it in a much more introverted way. Same thing, so, right? Like I'll spend an entire day. Like I was, we were talking about this, this new leather bag that I made, which is something that I do. It's like my cross stitch or my quilting or something. It's like something I do when I need a place to go creativity-wise. That's like. It's that, gift, it's that gift that you give yourself that's like out, that takes you out of space and time. Where you zone out, you get in a zone, and you forget about whatever, and you can just feel, and there's like this tactile. Yeah, very tactile. So, I mean, I spent the better part of a day staring at this bag and looking at this antique hardware that I had, just trying to engineer how the thing was going to clasp together, you know? So and I was just like... <laughs> and that, that was my introverted version of that. Just right. kind of like... Um, you know, I tell Natalie, it's my wife, that I don't feel like I have attention deficit disorder. I have like, you know, some sort of like intense, like ultra focus, focus disorder. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the <laughs> thing. It's like to that point. I mean, I think we have those different attributes about ourselves. Like anything, something that can be really, really great can also be really, really not so great. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like we can really, like our best gift can be our worst enemy. Right, like you Absolutely. can be so focused that you literally forget about your child who's falling into a pool. For you, sure, you know what I mean. Like where you just lose all sense of other awareness. And that goes for everything. And C.S. Lewis says um, that really, like, pleasure is just what happens before something is pushed to the point of pain. Mm. But that's not an exact totally. quote, but like, is really, that from uh, pain is a problem? Um, yeah, the problem of pain. The problem in pain. there. I, he said it multiple times. I forget which exact book, and that was definitely not an exact quote. I'm not your guy for exact quotes, right, yeah, yeah. but like paraphrase. Well, I, you know, like you have an itch, this right. that mosquito bite, and you're just like, oh yeah, and then you just keep going. And you're like, oh yeah, and then it's all of a sudden it hurts. <laughs> That's so real right now. It's is so that, real. Has that happened to you? No, I'm just you know, I am a method actor. <laughs> it's really good. Like I was really believing. I put it everything time. into it, yeah. but it, it's so true with everything. There's like. Whether it's something physical like that or whether it's something mental, it's mm-hmm. just, I don't know, life is about finding balance, I guess. Yeah. 
You know what I was about to do is I was about to introduce you, and then we just went off on that trail. That's so good. Who cares? What are that in the cliff notes or what are the cliff notes? <laughs> this is Dan. <laughs> cliff notes. Yeah, that'll be coming out at your local bar. Put, put, put it on the Twitter. So just, this is Dave Tosti, also known as David Tosti. Mm. So give us a quick, um, or as long as you want, history of kind of your artistic journey. Because Talk, but just not that much. Yeah. <laughs> just not We're too much. We're on a little bit of a... Budget of time here. So... That's you. By the way, where we are is this is my gallery in Fullerton. This is internal gallery and oddities, and he was just happened to be nearby, so we just threw this together. So, Dave, I've known forever. I, I don't know if I met you through your brother giving him drum lessons, or if I knew you before that. I think that. I met you from Tony Terusa. Okay, so Tony Terusa, and, and who somehow connected us. Yeah, I don't know. That's good. John Wilson. John Wilson, I think, told my brother about okay. you teaching. All people you may not know, so this is potentially boring you. Don't stop listening. <laughs> All these guys, amazing guys, and mm -hmm. this was what, mid nineties. Yeah, it was like ninety four, ninety five, ninety five. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. So I ended up giving you, your brother Squid, also known as Aaron Tosti, <laughs> um, drum lessons. He was like maybe thirteen or twelve. Eleven when he started. Eleven. Yeah. Wow. Amazingly talented drummer. He's like the first kid of that age that I just looked at and I was just like, I heard him play, I was like, wow, the, the potential and also just what's actually there, it's just yeah, phenomenal, you know? Right. And then I learned about you and your band and or I, I We before. started at that time, I mean, we were basically starting at the time, Ethan Luck and myself mm -hmm. and then my brother. So the band and is then called? John, well, John Wilson was playing first, Pax was the band and then it later became Pax 217 a few years later when I actually started singing, but at the time I was playing bass. My brother was playing drums. John was playing drums. Then my brother came in. Yeah. And uh, morphed into. Wow. Yeah. Stuff. So you guys went from local band. What would you say your uh, describe maybe the style or, or the influences or however you want to do that? Like yeah. Yeah. Was, I mean. What were you into at the time? Um, at the time, man, I was such. I would say like core influences were like. Uh, Beastie Boys, Chili Peppers, U2, Bob Marley, um, yeah, so probably There's some heavier influences in there too, right? Yeah, I mean, I was definitely, I mean, I was into the Deftones, I was into um, Rage Against the Machine, for sure. Um, God, talk about a drummer, he's still one of my favorites, dude. Really? I yeah. just, dude, I don't know. He's got that loose yes, rock thing. Yes, it's loose, which I dig, like, there's something about that that just feels human. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I've that's always a, done that about That's it. such a great example, I think, of where uh, something that I don't connect to. Right. Yet, it's it's easy to. My head just filled with thoughts yes, about that, I, that whole concept, but not right. to throw you off track. But no, it's, good. it's such a cool thing when you hear you know, something that you don't necessarily connect to, and that even maybe earlier in life, I was like, I don't know about that guy. That you realize is that it isn't about good or bad in an objective sense. Yes. It's what do you connect to and why. Um, and there's validity in the things that you don't necessarily totally. like, as opposed to being sort of an elitist and thinking that like one's good, one's bad or whatever. Yeah. So it's there's this this group of very loose rock drummers mm -hmm. that it's on purpose. It's not an accident. Right. And they're, they're very it, yeah. intense, precise drummers. And he's one of those guys that I think maybe took from um, or is it in the lineage maybe of the Bonham type I was going to say Bonham, yeah, yeah, for sure. But not That's in the right. sense that he's really tight and precise, more in the sense that he's just, oh, he's going along Big with this and primal. Yeah, primal for sure. Yeah, something like this. So That's anyways, the yeah, so, the, <clears throat> so you, you were rapping, you were singing. Mm -hmm. It was fairly aggressive, but there was a reggae. There's a reggae, I mean, we were, we were always, you know, to be honest, we were always, perf you know, sort of compared to like, Anything that got written up, it was always like, oh, they sound like 311, they sound like Biscuit, which I was just like, oh, do you have a blunt farm tool I can impale myself on? <laughs> so I just got co compared to Fred Durst, you know, but... Um, yeah. Richard Marks, Limp Biscuit, and... <laughs> and Michael Bublé, a switch yeah. of Michael. Yeah. So, um, I just... We, those were kind of the bands we were compared to. We like to think of ourselves as not as, you know... I guess, you know, because we have this reggae rock and, rock and hip hop thing going on, that's what was out there big, and yeah, it makes sense, you know. Everybody Not that they're, I mean, I, they're a great band, they do what they do really, really well. Right. Um, and I was into them 
for a while. Um, when I was, you know, 14, 15, for sure. Um, yeah. But yeah, so um, it's just kind of like a... And know, what led to you, you, local band, you eventually got signed by one of the bigger, um, and I would say perceptually cooler kind of Christian labels. Yeah, I mean, we got signed to an EMI label called Forefront Records, and um, we just started touring our brains out. We got, you know, I mean, I, I still to this day, I just think, you know, we were really lucky. The timing was perfect. Um, we did yeah, first, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? No, I mean, we worked hard. We worked Fortunate. super hard. Lucky. Lucky, hard, hard work produces hard work. luck. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. Like, we, we, we worked so hard. Like, I was relentless. I mean... Even now, stepping back into doing this again, I, I'm constantly around like, oh yeah, like, like I used to work really hard. This doesn't come easy. This right. isn't like a, hey, I just sit down for a couple. Of, like, I used to always have uh, people in my life who would be like, hey, can't you just like, why do you need like a week to work on a recording? Like, can't you just sit down for a couple <laughs> hours and bang out a song? And I'm like, no. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's like I heard Chris Martin, who was great with Howard Stern, he said, um, Howard Stern was like, he was talking about that song Yellow, uh -huh. and he was like, yeah, man, so I was like joking around doing this like Neil Young impression in the studio, like he's on the mic and he's recording another song, but he started joking around, going, look at the stars, look how they shine for you, and he, and they were all like, hey, that's something, yeah. and then he goes in the bathroom and he starts singing in the echo, uh -huh. and he comes up with the next part, and he comes back and he's like, I think I got the song, and they like tracked that song, it was like, one of the last songs. So the bathroom heard. was the yellow then urine the, um, initially. Yeah. <laughs> That's what people were joking about. No, it's uh, your skin. It's a I can't that song. Right yeah. Um, something beautiful. Yeah, yeah. So he was talking about the song, and Harrison goes, so "You just, you just bang out these huge hits in like 15, 20 minutes." And he goes, "Yeah, but you didn't hear the other seven thousand I wrote before that, right? You know, and it's like just that um, I've been really kind of." Staying in this idea that like just work produces work, you know, and you just keep doing the thing, and you practice, and then all of a sudden in the right space, the right time, you're listening properly, and the thing will come through. Yeah, you know, and you're trying to align you know a lot more, way more about that than I do, especially doing it as long as you have been. You know, I feel like it's tricky for me right now to go, oh, I did this thing for a while and I was somewhat successful, and I had, yeah. you know, there's there's successes in there, but as a songwriter. Well, I have so much to learn. I have so you know, I have so many thoughts going. To try, trying to like compile and edit and like without over crushing it before I do it. Yeah, you know, it's like oh my gosh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> at that time doing that style of music, I mean, you guys sold what a total of around eighty thousand records. We did like two hundred between the two records. Two hundred between the, that's huge. I mean, back then, especially you no, know, I, I always laugh when I'm like, there was no social media then. Right. Like if we had had, it was one fan at a time. We had we sort of won we played a show with thirteen people and win twelve of them. You know, right. like I always think of that line in almost famous. He was like, "I find that one guy in the crowd who's not getting off, and I make him get off." You know, and I'm like, <laughs> when I when I saw that movie the first time, I was on tour actually, and I was like, "I get this guy. That's what I do. I just couldn't articulate it like yeah. that. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't yeah. have said it like that. But like, I literally go and like, I'm gonna win these people. Like, I'm gonna connect with these people. Not not win as in sell, mm -hmm. but uh, when is in connect with them as a human and provide an experience and create an experience and, and then what's cool about, about live music to, for me is that it's not just me doing a thing it's us doing a thing because there's a there is a a synergy if you will yeah. between the, the crowd and, and once you start feeling that you, you start noticing certain parts of the room and what's going on it's really amazing what people are responding to you know and yeah my perception of, of you too Knowing you at that time and having, you know, mental pictures and some experiences of you um, as a performer and knowing you since more as a, you know, as a photographer and a friend mm -hmm. and we'll get more into that, but I think it's, it's an interesting combination, I think, the, somebody who's naturally a, uh, a front man or a lead right. singer is, and also a creative person and a writer. It's like blending things that don't belong together. Mm -hmm. It's an, it's the ability for introversion and, and self reflection in the in the personality of an extrovert. Right. And somebody who's really about the moment, you know, like um, I'm definitely somebody who is 
can really connect to the moment, but I lean on the side of introversion and, and reflection more so. So, and my life represents that, you know, like I, I think I've spent on purpose so much time in the studio and, right. and I love the writing and recording process and I love performing, but I think performing as it's culturally known, I, I try to disappear into myself on stage and display that, whereas I think yeah. the beauty of what you're talking about right there is <laughs> right. to go up there, be fully in yourself naturally, but because of the extroversion, the extroversion, mm -hmm. you're about soaking in the energy of the crowd, and, and you'll know if there's one guy that's not into it. I, I find that fascinating. Yeah, it's a weird thing, like, because I think because a true extrovert is someone who gains energy from others, right? right. I mean, yeah. so definition. Yeah, so so it's like, if for me, you know, when when I go away for a while, like if I start, if I just get in work mode and creating, or if it's photography, if it's music, whatever it is, yeah, um, I last a little while. And then I literally like need to go outside and see somebody. Yeah, like, like I your, need to your video music. game. Your energy is just dying. You're yeah, not totally. something back. <laughs> I like I go. Oh my gosh! I realize like that was with photography. You know, I love shooting, but when I when I'm done with the shoot, I'm not interacting with people. It's like I'm pretty bored. I'm pretty over it. It's not interesting to me. Wow. I don't enjoy the computer process that much. I, I can do it. I'm yeah. decent at it. You know, but. Um, but you know, I used to go you know, edit for seven hours straight, and I just literally like end my life now, please. You know, like I just wow. hated it. And um, a lot of people, I'm mean, sure you probably love it, right? I mean, yeah. I, that. I actually get a very, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better term, like zen-like calm mm -hmm. when when I go to you know dig into maybe like editing drums or right. or like. <laughs> When I know a process, that's why leatherworking is something. Like I know yeah. a process involves a lot of steps, mm -hmm. and they're solitary. I can just sort of dig into it and that's go, cool. and like a very solitary person. Like I have to be reminded that I need, you know, water, uh, relation, <laughs> water food, <laughs> right. relationship. I still need those things, but my uh, awareness of the need, I think, is sort of yeah. dim. You know, yeah. like there'll, there'll be times where. Um, you know, three, four, or five days will go by, and I'll realize like I haven't stepped out my front door, or gotten in my car, mm -hmm. or seen anybody other than my wife, and I'll be like, oh my gosh, there's trees, and there's, there's a world. <laughs> yeah, totally. And I'll be like, well, I, I have, have like a prison mentality, like a self-imposed yeah. this weird cabin fever, yeah, yeah, but I haven't yeah. noticed it. Um, so yeah, I sort of thrive on it, but I also know that it's not, it's not the natural human way, right, right. right. <laughs> you know. Maybe we should title this podcast Yin, like, is it Yin and Yang? Or yeah. What? I'd love that. I mean, yeah. I, mean, and, and, I kind of want to be Yang. You should be Yang. You're definitely Yang. I'm Yin. I don't, so, I don't feel like I'm fully Yin. <laughs> Yang's, Yang's a more fun word to say. <laughs> but yeah, like, um, just realizing, like, I can get into that space. You know, there are moments when I have that space. Yeah. But also, you know, I love... Um, I love collaboration, I love team, I love group, I love hearing other people's ideas. Like right now, writing, I like get so far and then I go, gosh, I just want to do this with someone else. Yeah. And it's really about the relationship. It's not like, oh, I need someone or um, I can't do this alone so much. Yeah. But it's more, gosh, it's so much more fun to do the same. I think that day, I mean, yeah. I want to, to touch on that when we wrote Evolution. Uh -huh. That like is was that first time in so long because all the other sketches of ideas I've been working on have pretty much just been me. I haven't maybe musically there's been some help from other people, but um, really lyrically and thought process concept wise. So set that up for those. Okay, who so don't know, which is everybody. so yeah, I mean that's a great thing. Um, so I've been working on this album and chipping away at it. So after and years. After years, so the band broke up in two thousand five. I get pre you know, wife's pregnant, have a baby, knee jerk into photography, start shooting weddings, which is still to this day, you know, I'm good at it, and I, I did it for a long time, but yeah. it um, always felt fish out of water for me. Yeah. Um, and then fast forward for you know seven years or so, I've been like, I'm gonna make an album this year. This is the year I'm doing it, you know, but like not really taking the action for it, and mm -hmm. um, and so this last year, I don't even remember. I remember us just talking about, hey, should we? Would be cool to work together uh -huh. and come and buy your spot and be in the studio with you and Gannon and 
I was sitting there and, and I love that you just went, you know, we're talking about ideas and, and then you said, so you just want to like, you want to write something now? And I was like, honestly, for me and my insecurity being with you guys, because you're so great at what you do, I was like, ugh, like, <laughs> I, I don't have anything right now. And then I had said something to you like, I just feel like I'm in this great evolution of my life. And you're like, that's a song. And I was like, yes, it is. <laughs> yes. And then we just... I mean, it was what five hours or something. We we're yeah. knocking out this song, and um, and to this day, of all the things I've written, I mean, I'd say lyrically, it feels so true. Yeah. And that's been my biggest effort is to find authenticity, like deep, deep authenticity. I think before when you talk about not being aware and pleasing the crowd and the yeah. what you think you want to project in the world, I was doing that prior. Yeah. And and, it, and it's not all bad. There wasn't it wasn't all in, uh, inauthentic. I wasn't trying to be some pop star that I wasn't. But I also look back and I go, oh, I have a lot to learn from that, you know. And yeah. now I go, I want to be super raw and authentic. And even if there's language and words and thoughts that you know uh, may feel like, oh, that's a lot. That's kind of heavy to say, or that's so too much, or whatever. I think what I'm grateful for is this idea that I'm fluid. Like, I might think one thing today and I might not tomorrow, you know? And so right back to writing that song, I think that was monumental for me just to get into that process again. Mm -hmm. To be able to say what I want to say. Um, and it feels true, you know? So. That's cool, man. Yeah, I, mem I remember just kind of knowing that where you were at in that and just feeling like the permission to be vulnerable, the mm -hmm. permission to do something and let it be what you did today and mm -hmm. kind of wrap it up, you know, and and even since then, it's like, yeah, because we're so different artistically, I think there are things that we could do together and then there are things that we will bounce off of, you know, as yeah. friends and, and, and for some reason I've just felt like as your friend, like, just, somebody's just going to go like, dude! Yeah, just, dude, come on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then like well, that's what we need, man. Like, yeah. It's been so helpful. Um, it's so helpful to <clears throat> have that little push, you know. And I recently told a friend of mine, uh, do you know Rob Bell? He's I'm, an author. Yeah, I know who he is, but yeah, tell us. Um, so Rob's a good friend. I've shot photos for him for different things over the years. Um, he was on an Oprah tour. I had photos of him and stuff like that. So, um, but. I hung out with him a couple weeks ago in LA and, his, and we were just chilling in the jacuzzi and I was telling him, hey, I'm going to just leap off the bridge here and do music again and I don't really know how I'm going to pull it all off, but I'm going to do it. And, mm -hmm. and he was like, nice, I like that. And he goes, yeah. Well. And I said, you know, I've been really challenged doing photography um, financially and it's been challenging in a lot of ways. And I said, so I might as well jump off and do this because I love this and this is, feels like the most me. Right. And, and he was like, yeah, he goes, yeah, life's... I saw he's challenging, you might as well do something you love. And I was like, yeah, and you know, he called me the next morning and shared some stuff with me, just like, hey, I had some thoughts about that, you know? And I was like, yeah, and he's like, really, it was just, he's just such a good friend, he was just complimenting me on like, dude, you're such a great performer, and you know, you, you're the life of the party guy, and all sorts of things, just some kind, kind words, and I was like, ah, oh, thank you, I needed that. You know, like, right. just that little extra, like, nudge, and that little push, and I think it's easier for us all to go by and forget to encourage those around us, like, to, keep doing what you're doing. You know, just, hey, you, you, yes, keep going, because it's awesome, like. As artists, man, we're live wires. We're some of the most sensitive types of people on earth, mm -hmm. and if, it's very easy, especially for some reason, the thing that I think we're most best at is often the thing that, that requires the most vulnerability, mm -hmm. and therefore is the first thing that comes under attack, and we have, we have the most insecurity about, even yeah. though it's our, our biggest strength, totally. is often our biggest uh, weakness. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that I was struck by when I first saw you perform, was just how much you were engaged with the audience and were giving everything, and mm. there wasn't, you know, I talk about this a lot on the podcast, but when there's, when there's any part of yourself watching yourself, judging, assessing, that's a part of yourself you don't have for what you're doing. Yes. So, if 80% of yourself is performing and 20% of yourself is over here going like, eh, I don't know about that, man, but, mm -hmm, and judging... You're not in the present, totally. and that's a B minus. Like you have a hundred percent, if that. <laughs> yeah. So if you have a hundred percent of yourself engaged in it, um, is that our alarm? Yes. If you have a hundred percent of yourself engaged in the process of uh, of doing, then that's an A plus, man. Yeah. So, and that's what I noticed about you as a performer is that you were giving everything, and that is 
a rare strength. Yeah. So Thanks, it is something to sort of like not let, you know, fade into the sunset. Hmm. You know, it's like, that's cool. It takes a little further on the journey then. So we were talking about performance. We were talking about your, your, the song Evolution is sort of like the rebirth of your music career. Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I think it just feels like that thing that needs to be said first. I think there's a line in there. It's like it resonates all day. And it was like that cool moment. I, I literally remember walking from the uh, control room control room to the tracking room, and like going to the door and having this thought go through my head. And it was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I, I, and it's um, I'm still a friend to the matter I was. But don't quote me. I'm in evolution. Mm. And I just have had to process through a lot of voices in my head saying, what you did was this, you know, you made mistakes, like the mistakes we make, the things that we did that we're not so proud of ourselves, you know, yeah. it could be literally a song that we wrote that you're like, eh, I'm not really feeling that anymore, yeah. you know, or that doesn't resonate with me, or I don't believe that thing, or, um, you know, to a mistake you made in a relationship or something like that, and yeah. I think just realizing, like, again, kind of like I said a minute, a minute ago, like, just realizing that we're, we're fluid. We all want, we're so programmed to categorize, to um, judge and put people in things, right? Like, oh, he's that guy. Yeah, and he's oh, stuck he, there. That's and it. he's, that's a, a, yeah, he's never going to be like anything else, you know? And that's such crap, you know? It is. I mean, it's, it's such garbage to hear that. And to, and to know that I grew up believing that about myself, mm -hmm. you know, just going like, oh, I'm just this way, and I'm just this person and I go no actually I'm not I get to choose who I want to be every yeah. day every minute and that's that's cool <laughs> yeah when I hear that line man I think um, my sort of reactionary symbolic thought to that was mm -hmm. was like it's almost like a scar you know like I'm still a friend of the matter I was it's like this this was my hand then this is my hand now there's the mm -hmm. scar it's healing yeah. you know like I'm an evolution it's going to look older and older every day it's totally. just that changed me inside and out, yeah. and, and I'm not that guy. Yeah, I'm and fresh like, wound. totally, that's awesome. That could, like, you know they say, is it every seven years are we literally physically become different, mm -hmm. even say based on our cells changing? Right. And that to me, like, whenever I learned that, whatever, <laughs> it was yeah. five, ten If it's totally ago. true or not, it's, yeah. I've heard that it is. It, I've heard it, it is, I, I don't know, what <coughs> it, but, but if that's the case, um, that that kind of freed me a little bit when I heard that. Yeah. Like that gave me that thought, like, yeah, like I am always changing, and that's good. Yeah. We're just we're just we just like to often as humans, especially Westerners, go. You're like this, and like you're not going to change, and you're always going to be your. That guy's like this, you know. These yeah. judgments we say about people instead of going. You know, I like to go. Oh, in that moment, they acted like this. You know, yeah. at that moment they did blank. Well, and within that is forgiveness too, forgiving yourself, totally. forgiving others. I mean, having compassion, for having compassion like for yourself, for uh, for other people, and I mean, think about this in terms of self-image, mm -hmm. like categorizing others. But categorizing ourselves as artists is often um, such a negative thing. It can be helpful in, in bolstering at certain points, right. but it's really all it is is you're you're bolstering your ego, not your true self, and like. Mm -hmm. So the question for you would be like, was has there been a point in the last since two thousand five or when you started photography? Has there been a point where you were kind of like, I'm a photographer? This is a really great question, dude. Yes. So there's this is really funny. So before my band broke up, we took about the last two years. We we're getting on a bad record deal. Um, we we're working on the material. We we're trying to get onto a new label, new management. So this is 2003 time, to 5? 2004 or 5, okay. somewhere in there. Um, I was working with a friend of mine who was a plumber. So every day, we're not touring, we're not really, there's not a lot of income happening, so I'm doing this plumbing thing, and it's not enjoyable work, mm -hmm. um, in my opinion. <laughs> and, um, but it was really good for me, because I was like underneath crawl spaces, scooping, you know, crap out of place. I was real deal. Quite literally. Yeah. Yes, and... Um, and my friend, who was the plumber, when I said I'm going to be a photographer, he said to me, he would call me and go, hey, you got to get out here, I got, I got big, he was like, I got big money for you, you got to get down here and, and work. And I, I'd always call him back or text him back and say, no thank you, I'm a photographer now. 
Like I literally had to cut the cord because I needed that money. There'd be days where I could totally use 150 bucks. Right. But I was like, nope. Like that's like one photo shoot's two days of work, right? Like yeah. whatever. I would do the math and work backwards and go, no. Like I just need to book one more shoot, you know. And, then uh-huh. have to, um, and so it forces you into saying, now, funny enough, three weeks ago I made this, drew this line in the sand, and so the following day I had this epiphany that I'm going to do music again. Uh-huh. And I'm not going to be a photographer. Right? And I sort of have to say that because my tendency, I think, often we go, I'm going to do this thing, but uh, I kind of got to do this over here. This is safe or this is familiar. Um, and I had this epiphany on Sunday, and Monday I go to this. I hear these photographers speak this thing, and the guy goes, "Hey, what do you do, man?" And I go, "I'm a, f- I'm a musician. I'm an artist." And he goes, "Oh, right on. That's cool. So what?" <laughs> I go, I don't know, man. I was a photographer yesterday. <laughs> he goes, what? I go, yeah, I was a photographer yesterday. Uh-huh. And I was for 10 years before that. But today I'm a, I'm a musician. And he's like, I like that. He's like, I'm digging that. And I was like, yeah, I just had to cut the cord. And it just so happens that you're meeting me on the day where yesterday I decided to draw that line, you know? That's so interesting. I don't know if that's where you're going with that question. but It partially is. I mean, I think... I think you found a cool mi- middle spot where that that self-image thing is actually can be a very healthy transitionary mm. way to, to, to think of yourself. Because in a way, if you walk around thinking you're a photographer where, um, I, I mean, I would say, this is my philosophical maybe challenge to it, mm-hmm. but I do think it's positive, is that you're an artist. Maybe you're looking through a lens. Yeah, whatever the Maybe you're is. singing into yeah. a mic. You know, and that's more of kind of a philosophical kind of outlook on it. But I think it's important in those transitionary periods to not put yourself in that box or to open up a bigger box. And because and, look what that does in the real world. You know, like you, the difference between you saying I'm a musician and you saying I'm a photographer changes that conversation. Yeah. Changes the way that guy experienced you and what you might tell a friend. Like it opens up doorways yeah, and, and a domino effect in your life. It's crazy just saying it, like literally physically. When I say I'm an artist, like I'm a musician, mm-hmm. it literally shifts the energy in my body. Like I feel different. Wow. I feel very liberated and much. I know it to your core. And this part. this may sound egocentric to me, but I feel much more powerful. Like um, there's a lot of me that feels like I've worked really hard at being a great photographer, and I, I've done great work, and I've had great successes. But man, it's been a lot of challenges. Man, it's been a lot of struggle. Like there feel there's a, a lot of attachment to struggle and strife in that conversation. When I talk about music, I don't even if there is the struggle and the strife, I don't feel it. Yeah. It's a weird thing. When you when you're in your lane, you just it, like I remember be, I remember remember being in the band and like working twenty four seven, you know, driving fifteen hours, setting up, playing the show, doing the merch, hanging out with the kids to the last last person left. Tearing down, going to the hotel, having a band meeting, doing the thing, driving four hours, no sleep, having to sing, drinking a gallon of water, hoping I'm gonna make it. You know, being on 17 phone calls in in between there with business, and none of it feeling like it was stressful at times, but it never felt like I just can't do this, man. Or this is such a struggle in my life. Oh, my life sucks. It was like, no, this is I'm. I've got this vision and this. Yeah, this passion. Like you were built to do it. Yeah, it just feels so right. And so right now, it's like, even when I say, people go, hey, how are you doing? What are you up to? And I go, oh, I'm writing music. I'm doing music again. They're like, literally, even people's response to me is so drastically different. And it, and it, well, it probably lights up your body language. It does. Like, people your just eyes. go, oh, that's cool. And they all, every one of them's like, oh, oh, that's awesome. Like, their immediate, isn't, it's not, it's never like, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. It's like, and it's, and I would say that's probably because of what I'm giving off, you know, energetically. Oh, yeah, like, for sure. I'm just going, yeah, I'm doing this thing, and they're like, oh, I, I, see, I'm digging, I'm feeling what you're saying, you know. Yeah. And that's cool, and, it, and it's you're building rungs on a ladder to get you out of the hole you're in. Yeah. It's like totally to say you're a musician is like ah, a new rung just appeared. <clears throat> yeah. Power, like yeah. you're pulling yourself up and out <laughs> while getting closer right. to your core, paradoxically, you know. Right, like, right. And that's. I mean, that's a great note to end on because it's just to get closer to who you really are, who you're made to be, you know, who God built you and designed you to be is like, is so empowering mm-hmm. in the best way possible. 
don't have the kind of power that brings others down, but brings you up and inspires others. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, it's great. Whatever that may be. Yeah, there's a lot of. I mean, the idea that we're we're all creators. Mm-hmm. We have this opportunity to to give the world something, mm-hmm. and I think for me, it was a real clarifying moment for me when I realized like I've been giving love to my kids. I've been giving photography. But when I give music, it feels like the biggest me. It's the gold. Yeah, and it's like, and, and not being afraid to be the biggest you. Right. You know, I think for me a long time, it's like, oh, you know, you know you're an artist, don't be arrogant, don't be egotistical, da 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 yeah. And worrying about all that stuff, instead of just being like, nah, I'm big. Like, I'm not, I want to do this big. I want to be the biggest me. I want to yeah. be the best me. And I feel like doing music sort of cultivates that for me. There's something in me that just I become the fullest sense of self that I am. I don't, I don't know how to describe it otherwise. Yeah, there's a great um, there's a great quote to end on, which I, of course, won't quote precisely, but the idea was... Um, I <laughs> don't believe, quote me. I, <laughs> I'm an evolution. I'm an evolution. Okay. Um, Rick Warren said it, is that, you know, humility isn't being, isn't pretending to be less than you are. Yes. Oh, thank you. Um, Heck yeah. That's, uh, that's, that's false humility, and to be cocky is to is to pretend to be more than you are. Mm-hmm. Humility is being actually exactly what you are, and the exact that size. Yeah, yeah. which amazing. is just so beautiful to me because it's like if you ever feel like you're ah, and somebody who compliments and you ah, pff, nah, man, I just, I just kind of suck in or whatever you do. That's it's oh, false humility. Yeah. It might be coming from a good place of trying to be humble, but to just absorb, just be you know what? Yeah, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. There's a different way of looking at it, and it's it's empowering to be the size that you actually are. Now it's no smaller, mm-hmm. no bigger. Totally. It's great. I just, dude, I had a moment. Let's, let's, okay. I know we need to end. And I'm a talker, as I've told her, but dude, I was photographing you years ago for one of your albums. Sleeping Fire. And you did something that I will never forget. <laughs> oh, I have no. shared so many times, and I'm going to really? say it because it's so perfect about, it. about humility. So I'm shooting, we were in Laguna, and I'm shooting you at this cool blue background wall. It was a shot that I loved that I actually yeah, had on my site years ago. In Laguna Canyon? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. This metal riveted yes, wall thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was super cool. And, and, you, and I said, you know, I was like sort of directing, like, turn left, okay, like do this thing, whatever. And you go, hey, wait, do you want the, the Christian album cover? And you went, and I go, okay, and you go, like this. <laughs> like the turn down smile thing. So for those of you watching, it's sort of like, it's, it's like a... Like, I'm just humble, man. I was laughing. <laughs> God's good, or whatever. The thing <laughs> and I, that has stuck with me forever as a false sense of humility. Yeah. That, like, people kind of promote. And it's not just a rip on that thing, but, but to also be like, it's a good reminder for me, like, that, that thing that people, we all kind of just are sometimes being that fake. Portraying, like, oh, just, just like. I'm just good. And it's like, dude, just own the fact that you, you make $400,000 a year being a worship pastor or whatever you're doing <laughs> and you have this album and like you know you can be big about it and it's cool yeah. and it doesn't have to be into this other thing and I'm not saying that all those people think that obviously but right but, but there it, these are like these uh it's a great visual of that yeah these yeah. archetypes of, of oh I'm I don't really want to be on camera <laughs> and I was just thinking something so positive <laughs> just on my own over here <laughs> just, oh, just captured it the goodness of life. There was no lighting or a professional photographer there. Just happy. <laughs> yeah, man. That's great. Well, dude, thank you for doing this, man. Thank you, man. It's a great. pleasure. Yes. This won't be the last time. No. Thanks for listening, and we will see you soon. Yeah. And him again soon. Broken City Artist Podcast. What is? How can people look you up and uh, explore? You can find me at, at David Tosti pretty much anywhere. Okay. Um, and and uh, music and websites and all that stuff are coming. So. Yeah. But Twitter, Instagram, etc. And yeah, photography yeah. is not dead. This guy's an amazing photographer. Thanks. Not only did you do my wedding, and weddings aren't, I don't believe they're lowly. I think they're capturing beautiful oh, moments yeah. in life. Oh, yeah. I need to view. But you've also done some incredible, you know, art driven photography. No, thanks. So if you Google David Tosti or Tosti Photography, you're going to find his work. You go back and look at PAX 217. There's some gems in there. There is some gems. I did have dreads. I did cut yes. them off. Amen. Uh, I did back. wear really baggy pants. They were just really, I mean, you could have... You needed room, man. Under. I know, when you can't free, y'all, you know, you gotta, like, 
It's true. <laughs> what is it? Uh, what well, one of my favorite songs was it? The um, Prism. Prism. I think you told me. Yeah, yeah Prism. I love Prism. That was. I'm proud of that one still. What, what's good. another one for people to check out? Uh, Prism. I'll see you tonight. Tonight. So it was yeah. A good, good song on our second record. That's and cool. Engage too. Engage is kind of one of my favorites. Engage, Prism, and tonight. Yeah. Cool. iTunes. All right, guys. Thank <laughs> you. Cheers. Ringing sound, poison rain. Don't come around here again. I will cover you. You will feel no pain. Wait for the blue sky again. Cause the money's gonna lie